I can't see the top of a window, so I can't minimize, maximize, or close. What do I do? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. This is one of those questions that comes across my keyboard every once in a while where people, for whatever reason, have a window that is perhaps only partially on the screen or is completely off the screen, sometimes because they unplugged a second monitor or the system got confused or even the program itself that's displaying that window somehow got confused about where that window should live. I wanna start first though by defining some of the areas on the windows that you may or may not already be familiar with. I'm hitting the start button and I'm going to run Notepad. So here's Notepad. You've probably seen it before, nothing special. The title bar is this entire area across the top of the window. It includes this icon, which is the system menu. We'll see what that means in a moment. This untitled dash notepad, that is the title that is in the title bar. Over here, we have three different controls, the minimize icon, a maximize icon, which in Windows 10 is also a gateway to a few different layout options. And then there's the X that allows you to close the window. The maximize button, if you just click on it, maximizes the window. It takes it to full screen. And at the same time, the maximize button then turns into a restore button, which if you then click it, restores the window to its previous position. But let's talk about that system menu because that's where a lot of the magic we're going to be talking about happens. I'm going to click on it and you'll see that there are several different menu items available here. Restore exactly the same as the button that we clicked on. Minimize and maximize, again, they even have the same icons as what you saw on the right-hand side of the title bar. But there are these two other items, move and size, that are, I'll just call them interesting. We'll talk about those in a moment. Now, here's the problem. If the icon, if this system menu icon is off screen, how do you get at it? right? How do you get at the system menu if you can't click on the system menu? Obviously, in a case like this, where we have some portion of the window visible, we can click on the title bar and move the window around and expose it and then go ahead and click on it. But if for some reason you can't, here's a little piece of magical advice. Hit Alt and Spacebar. That's the keyboard shortcut to display the system menu whether or not it's displayed. And you'll notice that it got displayed not in its normal place by that icon, but in fact, the first visible place that it could. It's actually off center or off, off the side of the window if the window had been fully displayed. But you now have access to all of the items on the menu. Okay, great. We know how to get to it if it's not being displayed. But how does that help us? Well, in a case like this, like I said, we can move the window with the mouse. But let's say we couldn't. Let's say for a moment that, I don't know, the mouse is broken, but we can still see even the tiniest part of the window on the screen. What we'll do is we'll type Alt Space to get that menu to display. Then we'll type M for Move. Notice right there that the mouse cursor has jumped to the middle of the title bar and it's turned into this four pointed arrow, this four directional arrow. Because now if I use any of the arrow keys on my uh, keyboard, I can now move the window around like that. It's a very, very quick way to be able to move the window if you can even see just the smallest part of it. All you need to do is click on any part of that window that's visible. In fact, I'll make it even a little bit less um, obvious. So yes, we've got the system menu here and I suppose I could click on it. Oh, look at that, I can't, awesome. If I didn't have a mouse and I had no way to move that window, all I would do is make sure that by using Alt-Tab, I made it the current program. 
Now that it's the current program, in other words, it's the window that all our keystrokes are going to. Once again, I hit Alt Space, I hit M for move, and I hit any of the arrow keys. And now, of course, I can move the window to wherever I might want it to be on the screen. Okay, that's nice if you've got even the tiniest of slivers visible of the window that you can either click on to make active or use the Alt Tab key to make active, then you can use Alt Spacebar and M to bring up the move uh, pointer and then use your arrow keys to move things around. Honestly, you know what? We didn't really need arrow keys. So I'll hit Alt Space, M for move. I'll use the arrow key once, just once. Okay, we now know this window's in the move state. Guess what? The mouse will move it too. Once you've actually got it into this state where it's moving by keyboard, you can just go ahead and reach for the mouse and drag it to wherever you want. Once you then click the mouse, you've released it and it stays where it's going to stay. So what if the window isn't visible at all? What if it's nowhere to be seen? What if it's off on another monitor that you no longer have connected? Well, the Alt Tab approach actually should work for you there as well. Okay, I'm going to move the window off the screen again as much as I can, which in this case means it's going to be very, very small. You can almost see it above the, the taskbar there. Let's assume that it's completely invisible. Again, Alt Tab is the thing to do to basically make that the current program. Let me make this a little bit more obvious. I'm going to fire up an additional program. I'll go ahead and fire up um, my browser so that I actually have two programs running. You can't see the second one, but I actually have the browser and notepad running. If I hit Alt Tab, you can see I can make one of these the current program. By making notepad the current program, whether it's on screen or not, now, when I hit Alt Space, I'll get a system menu. It may be in a weird location. It may be on some edge of the screen, but it'll be there. And at that point, you can hit M, use your keyboard and start moving the window back to wherever it belongs. You'll find that when this window is completely off screen, as soon as you hit Alt Space, the system menu will probably appear on the side of the screen that that window was closest to. So by then moving in the direction of the screen, in other words, if the menu shows up on the right hand side, hit the left arrow and it'll start moving the window into the left, it'll be right there and you'll be able to get access to it very, very quickly. All of this really underscores the importance of realizing that, you know, there's a keyboard interface to this thing. Alt spacebar is key to a lot of this stuff. Using it, you can minimize, maximize, do all sorts of different things to the window that happens to have the current focus. The same is true for sizing, by the way. I didn't show you that. If I run Notepad again and I hit Alt spacebar and S, now if I do the down arrow, it has attached itself to the bottom window edge. And now using the up and down arrows, makes the window smaller and larger. I hit enter to be done with it. Again, Alt space, S for sizing. This time I'm going to pick the right hand edge by hitting the right keyboard key. And now right and left cause it to be wider or more narrow, enter, and I'm done. There's lots of stuff you can do with the keyboard that a lot of people don't realize. We've used Alt tab to walk through the various uh, running programs. Uh, Control Escape is another one. That's another one to quickly get you your start menu. What most people don't realize is that once you have the start menu up with Control Escape, you can still use your keyboard. I'm going to hit the tab key and you can see that it starts with the program list. It then goes to all apps. It then goes to the recommended items. Then this, then the search bar. And it cycles between those. What if I want like settings or mail here? The arrow keys will now take you around to whatever it is you want. And if I were to go to, I'll just use edge again and hit enter, boom, edge comes up. So I've actually run edge from the start menu uh, without having to use my mouse. Another thing you can do 
is with the taskbar being the current program, in a way it is just another program, I'll just click on it here to make sure that it is the program that's getting the keystrokes right now. If I hit tab, that's the start menu. If I hit tab again, that's the search menu. The uh, virtual desktop or running programs list. The list of applications that are currently available or pinned to the taskbar. Tabbing all the way over to the notification area. And once again, once I've done that, once I've gone to one of these, arrow keys back and forth will let me move across the various items. You may have noticed that after I was on the notification area, I hit tab one time. Now I'm looking at the desktop icons. And if you have desktop icons, you can arrow around through those, hit enter to fire up the uh, whatever the icon happens to be. In this case, I'm looking at the recycle bin. If I hit enter, it brings up file explorer on the recycle bin. So those are very interesting and often useful keyboard shortcuts that you may not necessarily realize are there. But ultimately, the problem that we wanted to solve, not being able to move, see, or locate a window that has been off screen, the keyboard interface absolutely is your friend. I hope that helps. I hope that opens your eyes a little bit to some of the possibilities for what can happen using the keyboard if your mouse dies or if your window disappears. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com 10585. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.